After her death, Agent Fei Lao left behind some encrypted intel called Insurance Policy, with the sole purpose of having the Division find it. So far, we've learned of a number of things happening behind the scenes within the Black Tusk. Now, with this latest piece of intel, she shed some light on a mysterious faction that we've been speculating over for years. The Hunters. Lau, we need to talk. What's wrong, Schaefer? This squad you've saddled me with. Having trouble controlling them? Yes. I thought this was supposed to be your test, not mine. Everything is a test. Sokolova wanted to see my leadership style, and wanted to see how well I could manage you with additional external pressures. So you gave me Wraith on purpose? I gave you all of them on purpose. I... Fine. Wraith pissing you off? She was. Did she quit? She's dead. Okay. I asked for some support. Couldn't be in two cities at once. I needed someone to back me up. I called Natalia, and she hooked me up with some off-the-books backup. Didn't want to undermine your leadership. You have a name? For the guy they sent? No. Never met him. He's quiet, weird. Occasionally gets sent cryptic reports and messages like he wants me to solve a fucking riddle. There's something not right with this hunter. Do you know who supplied him? Cal. Cal? Yeah, she said, don't worry if it gets to be too much, Cal will take care of it. She couldn't mean McManus. Who the fuck is McManus? <sighs> oh, nobody. Just the Secretary of Homeland Security. That hunter is working for Homeland? What the fuck is going on? We... We should talk. Somewhere less exposed. So here we have Barden Schaefer talking to Fei Lau. This was obviously during his manhunt, before we capture him, because he talks of how Wraith has been killed. Like in the previous insurance policy comms, with Natalia and McManus, Schaefer is talking about how he can't be everywhere at once, and that he needs some support, and this is where it gets interesting. While we already know that Schaefer was provided a hunter, he talks of them like their common knowledge. There's something not right with this hunter. That hunter is working for Homeland, where the story, for the most part, has avoided mentioning them. Schaefer references hunters while talking to Fay like, well, everyone at that level knows of them. But in saying that, he also talks of this particular hunter being a little different to others, like this isn't the first one that he's met. But let's get back to that soon. Like I mentioned above, Fay has confirmed that McManus, Calvin McManus, aka Cal, is the Secretary of Homeland Security, and he was the one who provided this Hunter asset. The United States Department of Homeland Security is the US Federal Executive Department responsible for public security. Its stated missions involve anti-terrorism, border security, immigration and customs, cyber security, and disaster prevention and management. So based on that, it isn't surprising that the Strategic Homeland Division would come under their umbrella. Like we talked about in the last video, McManus is indeed high up within the government. But even as the Secretary of Homeland Security, this doesn't give him control over the division. They report directly to the President. Sure, it's likely that he will have been a part of the select few that were aware of the division, their mission, and how they would have been put in place. But he wouldn't have any control over their operations. Certainly not subordinates of his. Perhaps he is just overstepping his position as head of Homeland Security, assuming greater power than he actually has. Which, given the current situation, isn't surprising. But what if McManus is the next president? Alice is now dead, and we know of several others who have died in order to get him there. Perhaps their contingency plan was to put McManus in the position. I've seen a lot of people mention this in the comments, but according to the US Constitution, and Presidential Succession Act of 1947, the cabinet officers shown on screen in this order are next, with the Secretary of Homeland Security way down here, 18th in line. It might seem like a strange order of succession, but based on the act, the line of succession is in the order of the agency's creation, and the Department of Homeland Security was only established in 2003 as a result of the Homeland Security Act of 2002. 
enacted in response to the September 11 attacks, so this places it quite far down the list. But while I feel this is fairly unlikely that all of these high-level people have been taken out, this is still completely possible, especially given the fact that Homeland Security has this elite force of soldiers working for them. As their name suggests, they could have hunted all of these officials down. Now before I talk about the hunters a little more, let's address the interaction at the end of this comms piece. At this stage, we know that Fei Lao is working deep undercover within the Black Tusk ranks, yet she was immediately placed in a position where she would even have control over Schaefer. In Natalia's own words, Schaefer is loyal and has given absolutely no reason for her to doubt him. Yet Fei is someone she doesn't trust, who recently changed sides, and now she has been given control of a large piece of their operations. Does this not seem weird? Why would you put someone you don't trust in this sort of position? Anyway, this would lead to this interaction. Do you know who supplied him? Cal. Cal? Yeah, she said, don't worry if it gets to be too much, Cal will take care of it. She couldn't mean McManus. Well, who the fuck is McManus? <sighs> oh, nobody. Just the Secretary of Homeland Security. That hunter is working for Homeland? What the fuck is going on? We... We should talk. Somewhere less exposed. Schaefer seems to have been taken completely off guard here. He is a loyal, patriotic soldier. He needs to know that what he is doing is for the betterment of the country, his country. It would seem that Natalia didn't think he would like to hear the full reason behind what they're doing and who they're working with. And this is where Faye suggests that they talk about this further. Although I'm sure we'll be hearing more about this conversation in a future communication piece, my prediction is that Faye opens up to him, that she explains what she believes is going on, and attempts to bring him over to her side, our side. So let's get back to the hunters now, and quickly run through some of the more popular hunter theories that have come up over the last couple of years. Hunters are first wave agents loyal to Kina. We need to remember that between the time that the agents went rogue and the survival update that brought up the hunters, not a lot of time has passed in game. There wouldn't have been enough time to train up these top rogue agents into the new second wave killing machines. We've all found first wave agents before. They could be seen roaming around New York with squads of LMB. Although tough opponents, they certainly aren't to the same caliber of the hunters. On top of this, the hunters have examples of SHD tech that is superior to what the first or second wave has been running. For example, their jammers. Where did this come from? and how would it have been manufactured in this short period of time within the Dark Zone. Hunters are first wave agents, not loyal to Kina. This still doesn't explain the different SHD tech and where it came from. Also, it doesn't really explain why they have traveled to Washington DC. Perhaps they're in too deep. Maybe they heard the distress call and decided to rejoin the fight as a faction of their own. Hunters are Black Tusk Special Forces. It is possible that they were brought back to the capital to assist in taking down division agents. But the Black Tusk special unit didn't seem to be having any troubles doing that on their own. They just seem to be a little less motivated. It's like they're wandering around aimlessly, unsure of what to do. Maybe the hunters were stood down after the BTSU commander ordered them to stop the killing of division agents. But why does the first one we come across kill Agent Edwards? and then leave us alive after knocking us into a shocked paralysis type state. Hunters are Russian special forces. The overall way that the hunters act in the Division 2 has shifted dramatically. Given that their overall goal hasn't changed, shouldn't they still be trying to hunt Division agents as ferociously and brutally as before? In the Division 2, it's like they'd rather not get into combat with us at all. They fight back when we engage with them, but it's not uncommon to see them moving away from us during these battles. It feels like we're calling the shots now, and they're simply trying to defend themselves. Plus, these recent events are certainly leading us down a much different path. The Third Wave The Hunters being the Third Wave was my preferred theory from many, many years ago. And now, with Season 9, it's looking more and more likely. However, in a slightly different way than I originally spoke about. Rather than being a part of the SHD themselves, it's looking like they're a part of a different agency altogether, but with the same goal. 
McManus is the leader, or is a part of a group working within the government behind the scenes, that was responsible for this whole event in human history. Being aware of the division, the Hunters were established as his personal group of division agents. Except these agents, or Hunters, are more highly trained, better equipped, and follow only his orders. In a situation where all other existing law enforcement and military has failed, the Division are the last line of defence. So McManus needed his own personal troop in order to stop the agents from interfering with his plans, and they needed to be stronger and more highly skilled. While I don't think the Hunters were brought on board to clean up all Division agents, I think they are here to help with any that proved to be more work to take care of, or ones that didn't follow the chain of command when the President moved over to the other side. I get the feeling that there isn't actually so many of the Hunters available, that they are a super specialised unit, potentially chosen from units like Delta Company. I think of them like ghosts from Ghost Recon. And before anyone gets too excited, no I don't mean a crossover, I simply mean that the Hunters are chosen in a similar way. This even explains their military tattoos. They are the best of the best, they are an elite unit, who are put in place as a counter to the last line of defence, and anyone who gets in their way. We obviously have a few more of Faze comms to discover in this season, but based on the names of these comms, I'm not expecting we'll learn too much more about the Hunters at this stage. Potentially later on though, the writers certainly seem more interested in expanding on the speculation behind them. But hopefully I'm wrong, and we'll hear a little more about them in the next one coming out in a few days. This video was a little rushed, but I said I would get one out before the next Manhunt target was released. So rather than leaving it another week, I've just removed the section where I was talking about other unresolved stories relating to the Hunters, like Agent Edwards and Vikram Malik. In light of this new information that has come from Phase Comms, I have a few theories that may explain what happened in each of these situations. But I kept going back over it and rewriting it, so I'll just put that to the side for now and pick it up when I have more time to run through it properly. This isn't the sort of topic I'd like to rush. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. In the next day or so, this video will also be available in podcast form on Spotify. I'll have a link in the description. It'll also be available on other major podcast platforms. They just seem to take a little longer to authenticate new creators, so hopefully not far off. Bear with me though, I'm new to this space, and I'm still trying to figure out the most efficient way of ensuring that I'm making my scripts podcast-friendly as well. Thanks again, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers! Cheers!